Hey there, Journey. David here. Um, sorry I'm a little bit late with this most recent war recap. You guys remember the deal that we cut. Whenever you guys put up a perfect war, I will uh, guarantee you a recap video. <laughs> and so you gave me the perfect war, and so who am I to deny you the recap video? I've had some computer trouble lately, and so the recap video is just a little bit later than I normally like to get it up. But let's talk about our dismantling of the clan Bad Not Mad. I do not know whether or not they were mad. They said they weren't. Uh, they also said they were bad. You know, I can't refute it. What can I say? Uh, I wouldn't say necessarily that they're bad. I'd say we were really good. I mean, what can we do? We had a couple of TH-10s we cleared, cleared the 9s, cleared the trash. Really nice effort. Really, really proud of Journey throughout this war. Um, did a nice job throughout. Let's dive right in and look at some attacks because we've got a bunch of good ones to show. And we're going to start by showing my man Chase on the mass bowler attack, the mass bowler walk. This is something that Power Bang shared on recently, something that we've been talking about a lot inside the clan, and it's something I wanted to just detail. I'm going to show two replays back to back on the mass bowler walk, talking about it, which I hope can also serve as a reference and journey to other TH10s that want to learn this attack. This is a really powerful attack. Step one. Find the Inferno Towers. I found them. Step two, draw a line connecting them. You want to be sending the boulders in along that line. doesn't need to be perfect, right? But somewhere you want to be sending them in, either from the top or the bottom, so you're hitting those Inferno Towers one at a time. As you approach those Inferno Towers, you're going to be freezing them one at a time as the boulders approach, and you're going to be raging those boulders uh, again, one at a time, that huge pack of bowlers with the healers behind as they approach. And so it's a really powerful attack. It's, it's the same strategy is going to be used throughout. In order to get those bowlers to go into the line, which is the tricky part, in this attack style, which is the queen walk mass bowler, normally you're going to start by walking a queen along an edge. Let's say this edge or this edge, one of those two to clear that out of the way. Um, if you walk along this edge, we need to put something down, maybe a baby dragon or two, to clear out some of the trash along here um, before you finally wall break in and then use that jump to get those bowlers going at those inferno towers that you're then going to rage and, excuse me, rage and freeze as you get there. So let's see what Chase does. He starts off with the baby dragon, which makes a lot of sense to me. So he's going to try to cut away this trash building. When there's one baby dragon on its own and no other flying units are nearby, guys, it goes into a rage and starts doing uh, super damage. And so it takes out a couple buildings, which was its job. Next baby dragon comes down over here, and I think the main point of that dragon, although I haven't talked to Chase, I think the main point of that dragon was to make sure the queen walked north, which is the way it wanted it to go. We're going to end up getting some great value on that queen. Going to take care of... Uh, Defense, Archer Tower, Mortar, Cannon, we're going to get some great value on this Queen Walk. And already we're ready to start the main attack. Um, this Mass Bowler is a fast attack, so you do have time to leisurely go about your Queen Walk if you want. You could send a Hog in and pull some CC and deal with it. A lot of different things you can do, but if you're ready to go, and Chase is, might as well go. So down come the Tanky, Golem, and Giant, the couple whiz behind. They're doing their thing, clearing away those trash buildings, making sure that when the boulders come in, they have nowhere to go except in. King down first, which is appropriate. Wall breakers in right after. Again, perfect. We've got my King and my Lava, uh, excuse me, my King and my Golem leading the charge, soaking Expo damage, which is perfect. In come the boulders behind, the jump and the freeze, as I promised you, and the rage, as I promised you, and the poison, again, as I promised you. And those boulders are tearing through the space. First Inferno Tower down, Tesla's down. Second Inferno Tower thinks about locking on, frozen. Yeah, the freeze could have maybe been a half second later, but that's okay. We've got healers on the bowlers. The queen steps up and takes care of the inferno tower. And now if you step back and look at this base, what is left, guys? What's left out of this base? Nothing. The king's up. The queen's up on Chase's side. He's got cleanup loons coming in to take care of some defense. They've got a long way to go. He puts down a haste to help them. There's healers on a bowler up top. There's a queen taking care of trash. There's a king bashing through the wall to take care of trash. It's just a, it's just an absolute beating. It's now we're in cleanup mode, and the base is done. 
right? This is a really, really well executed mass bowler attack. What's that? You want to see it again? All right, let's see it again. But just to keep, you know, the viewers interested, why not show it on base number two? Who remembers the algorithm? Step one, find the Inferno Towers. I found them. Draw a line. We want to come in on this line. I, I honestly don't remember which way Chase comes. Either way, the funnel's pretty easy. I, I think he comes from 3 o'clock. If that's the case, we just need to take care of some trash buildings here. We can probably leave that top camp up um, and then queen walk down along the top. Let's see if I get this right. Oop, don't move the line. Queen walk along the top, and once that's done, we should be able to send in all of our main forces, all those beautiful bowlers, right in. Wall breaker, jump, rage, haste, excuse me, rage, poison, freeze, another freeze over here, and just send those bowlers right through the middle of the base. That's what I would do <laughs> if I was a beautiful TH10 attacker. Let's see what Chase does. Uh, again, raged dragon on the top, which I think is getting ready to set the tone for the way that the queen will end up going. Uh, rage baby dragon on the middle. Eh, I think maybe he wanted that to go south. Didn't get great value for that baby dragon. Down comes the queen. We've seen this before, so I'm going to speed it up to, to twice speed. Queen's down. Poison down on the CC. The CC is going to come out as the queen does a walk, which is really nice. Nice that the queen's going to be able to take care of that. Right into what's left of the poison. She'll have to burn her ability, but no big deal, guys. Queen's doing her job, continuing the walk. I'll zoom in a little bit now. I'm expecting, yep, tanks in the form of Golem Giant. Wizard to take care of that pesky camp that was left. Beautiful wall breaker. King and Golem leading the charge. Bowlers behind. Another perfect. I mean, this base is over. It's three star and ready to call it. Jump. Freeze on that inferno. In go those bowlers. Rage up on the bowlers. Healers behind the bowlers. The King and the Golem are still first in. Soaking up Expo. Soaking up Texla. Second freeze is down. Bowler's still chugging through this base. Another rage. A little high on the rage, but that's okay. That's where the Inferno was. Bowler's crushed through that Inferno. The core is dead. The core is dead. We've already got cleanup loons on the bottom taking care of defenses. The healers are all down, so it's not going to be... I mean, it's still an absolute demolishing. Um, it's not going to be quite as decisive as the first time around when there were some healers left over keeping the king up and keeping some of the bowlers up. But nonetheless, with the pesky amount that's left, this is going to be no trouble for the queen and the bowlers to finish wrapping up. Now it's just trash buildings. Three star against a TH10. That's not a, I mean, it's not a amazing base, guys. It's not like base of the year, but it's a pretty decent base. And it was an absolute pummeling that Chase put on. So this mass bowler attack at the TH10 level, if, you know, Supercell just brought these bowlers down to take 6 CC space instead of 8 because they said they weren't getting enough play time by the general public. Well guys, until such time Supercell decides to nerf those bowlers again, TH10, practice your bowler attack. I, I think that attack you just saw Chase use twice, same attack. That power bang has been using, um, I, I can't recommend it strongly enough for TH10s. Really nice looking attack. Great execution, Chase. Thanks for laying out that template. Now we're going to go into a series of Queen Walk Vaho attacks. So popular with Journey, we've got three of them queued up to show. Um, the point of the Queen Walk Vaho, we want to start with the Queen Walk to either get good defensive value, well, always get good defensive value, and ideally nullify a few giant bombs, hopefully take out a clan castle as well. Then we want to funnel, and we want to get the Valks in, and we want to get the Valks to the Expos as quickly as possible. That's what we want to do with these Queen Walk Vaho attacks. Save the hogs for cleaning up at the end. So, Travis here, Hitman. You know, let's play good idea, bad idea. Good idea, great job funneling, getting rid of some trash to send the Queen down. There is a double, uh, excuse me, a giant bomb here, I believe, and here that he's going to effectively take out. He did a good job raging up the queen to take care of the king. Don't spend the ability on the king. Save the ability for clan castle troops. He did a nice job trying to pull the clan castle troops with that hog. Not a great job with the hog placement, but he'll try again. He sees that queen is bashing through the wall now. Sends the hog to keep things moving. 
His worst mistake of this raid by far was the lack of a poison right here. That poison should have been down, it should have been down early, and it should have been down targeting those loons so that they would have been dead by the time it made it to the queen. He remembered his poison now way too late. Uh, the, the healers almost died from the, the dragon, but because it was so late, that last loon falls and kills the queen. So now instead we're going to move on with the rest of our attack. And if the late poison was his biggest mistake, his second biggest mistake was should have gotten this camp taken care of and maybe even that collector before he let the Valks go. This was not a well-designed funnel. And as a result, right now, as these Valks are deciding where to go, the camp's still up and we are going to see significant Valks moving along to the left. When you're funneling for those Valks, put down a couple Valks or a couple Giants and take care of those trash buildings along the side before you go, guys, because this is a bunch of Valks that aren't doing the job that you want them to do. None the rest, less, the rest of the raid is good, took care of that first expo. Yeah, Jump wasn't super useful since he got it down too late. The Valks had crushed through the walls. <laughs> uh, the Hogs are down while the defense is... I, the Hogs are early for a standard Govaho attack, but in this case, since he had so many Valks walking around the outside, I think it made a lot of sense to deploy the hogs when he did, since the defenses were distracted by the Valks cruising along the outside. He hasn't run into any giant bombs in the middle of this base, which has allowed him to have the limited Valks that did go in to get more, more work done. His hogs barely take care of that expo at the top, and now, you know, even though he made a couple mistakes here, that late poison, the jump spell was also late because the wall had been busted through, the lack of a funnel, it was a good spell selection, it was good timing on the hogs, it was good heal that he put down in the middle, and I think the good outweighed the bad here. And with one poison left in the bag, three star on Hitman, who's going two above his mirror for this attack. Really nice job, buddy. Really nice job. Okay. That's a step down attack. Let's talk about Aragon versus 13. It's another Queen Vaho attack, Queen Walk Vaho attack. Um, we've got two Rage and two Heals here from Aragon. I personally would prefer to see a jump on these Vaho attacks. Um, it's so important to make sure those Valks get to the Expos. That's what you're trying to do. You're trying to rush those Valks into the Expos and having a heal for any double giant bombs that are located. So, in this case, he's going to get away with it. Oh, excuse me, guys. Whoa. Been, it's a little late here, excuse me for the yawn. Um, he's going to get away with it. He does not need to spend uh, the queen ability taking care of that king. It's a 13 king. So good patience, good awareness on his part. I don't know if there was a giant bomb here, but if so, he just nullified it with this walk. He's getting to that air defense before it's going to shoot at his healers. Again, really nice walk. Um, he pulled something down. He must have used a hog up top to pull the CC out. For me, that poison was a little low. Uh, that poison I wish was a little bit closer to the clan castle troop, so it would have gotten the witches instead of the skellies, would have gotten those witches earlier, but no problem. 26 queen with four healers on it is going to be able to handle a bunch of stuff. And already now we can see the attack started. Unlike Hitman, where we just saw, John has a nice funnel going down, almost an over. <laughs> overcommit to that funnel, but that's fine. It's the most important thing. And now you can see when these Valks do get dropped down which will be any second. CC Valks with CC Wall Breakers. I love those CC Wall Breakers, those Max Wall Breakers withstand an arrow, withstand a Wizard Tower. So as a guy who's failed on Wall Breakers quite a bit, I like seeing it. Now from here, they're going to Wall Break in. Um, if you're asking me, you know, I would have let the Valks get through one wall, and then I would have tried to see a jump that's going to make sure they get into the inner compartment. That's the most important thing to me. He doesn't have that jump, so he's going to have to trust in his rage to get the Valks to melt through the right walls. In come the Valks. Healers behind. Queen has uh, come up to join the charge, much as you saw in the bowler attack. Rage, the Valks pick the correct wall twice in a row, the majority of them, and they're into the center of the base. Not all of them. There was a little split. Some went north, but most or at least a good half went in the middle of the base, and the healers are supporting them, keeping most of those Valks up. They bang through another wall, and now we've still got a Rage and a heal in the bag. The Giant Bombs have all gone off. Great awareness by Aragon to see that the Giant Bombs had all been tripped, and thus realizing that his Hogs are going to be able to run 
without distraction, without fear through the rest of the base and letting them go. Support those hogs with a heal. And this thing's basically all over at this point. I mean, we can speed it up. We've got, look what's left in the bag. We've got a rage left in the bag. We've got a poison left in the bag. Just hanging out, guys. And so it is a swag rage to end the attack. Really nice job, Aragon. Um, you know, two rage, two heal. And I think that also underscores the point of why not bring a jump? Because as you can see here, yeah, he didn't even end up needing to use the rage. I think um, it was a risky attack. It paid off in this regard because he got the Valks to go through the right walls. If the Valks had chosen different walls right now, instead of having a swag rage left over, I think I think it, it could have been a less desirable result. And so for me, you know, maybe let's bring the jump and just make sure we get the Valks to go where we want the Valks to go. Okay, last attack. PK on James Bond. I, I, I didn't know James played. Um, 007, there he is. I'll start up on double speed just at the queen walk. One of the nice things about the Vaho attack, in contrast to, say, a La Loon attack, is that it's such a fast attack, you really have time to let that queen walk develop. And that's what Chad's doing here. That's what, that's what PK's doing here with this walk. Really love it. Really love the patience here that he shows. Just getting a ton of value out of his queen. He's not rushed. He knows those Valks are going to go through a ton of trouble, a ton of pain on the base very quickly. He's also bringing a golem with him, which is unusual, uh, at least from the, the attacks I've seen here at Journey. Normally, if you're going to do a queen walk and devote space to the healers, you're not going to devote another 30 space to the golem. But in this case, I think it made a bunch of sense. Um, first, because in the middle we have both Expos and all four Teslas, so there's a bunch of damage going on. And second, because he's really taking his time, letting his golem get way out in front, and then creating just a gorgeous funnel. I I've said this before, Chad has the best funnels in the clan, best funnels in the game. When he drops those Valks or the Pekkas or whatever it is, you know where they're going to go. And so now he's got the main troops coming in. He's got them sliding in. The queen has done her job, basically taking out a third of the base. And now in comes everything else. A nice rage to get them moving through. Poison on the CC troops. Jump to get them into the compartment with the Expos and the Tesla. He took his time, so he knew the Golem and the King were going to be out in front. And they are soaking up all kinds of damage. Bombs going down now, taking out some, some wizards that had snuck in. Oh, excuse me. But overall, nice. Now the Valks are in. If he had a heal, he would use it now, but he doesn't. That's okay. Hog's coming in on the bottom. He's recognized that the giant bombs are now no longer a threat because he's nullified all of them, or, or blown all of them up, I should say. He's got Hogs coming in from the left. He's got Hogs coming in from the right, and Valks coming in from the right, the old pincer attack. And he's got the healers and the golem and the king coming in from the top with the queen as well. And there's just nothing left of this base. Queen ability left over, which maybe he'll use just to help for cleanup. But look at all the troops left. My word. Full golem, Valks left, healers left, queen with an ability left. Everything running over that base. Just smashed it. Loved the patience. Loved the setup. Loved the funnel. Um, you can see why some people think the golem is overkill here. And in general, we've moved away from using it. Because it stayed up the whole time. You know, normally I like to see those golems splitting at least once, <laughs> indicating they've taken a lot of fire. But you know what? In this case, I think it was the right choice. It stayed so far ahead of the pack and had the healers on it um, there at the end and was soaking up so much damage in the middle. It's just a patience game, and that's really was my favorite part of this attack was just the patience shown and waiting for that three star. So those are our attacks for the day. Really nice job journey on the war. There were more beautiful, beautiful attacks. I just don't have time to show. Um, but really nice job top to bottom. Aaron, even as a, uh, you know, you're a 9 5, so I, I don't generally show your step down attacks. But really nice attack on 3 and 4, buddy. Really, really nice attack. Just mopping those tough, tough TH9s up. Um, Jake had some step downs there. Do we have any step? Step down at or any 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 six packs. You know what? I think our six pack was the one I showed my man Chase, who I guess we'll call MVP of this war, uh, with those beautiful clears on those tens up top. So, really nice war, guys. And as usual, insert catchy catchphrase here. <laughs> Thanks.